Okay, so part of the, one of the things that we have to look at, because uh, we haven't learned about neurotransmission since neurotransmission since you know back in the day, um, and since the other day we made some videos about the K score and how Kit or Zit and it is. Uh, so let's um, let's. Uh, I found a video. Professor Dave, um, whatever, whatever, new screen recording, being transmitted I've already watched two minutes Professor Dave here let's check out some neurons he knows a lot about the science stuff Professor Dave explains we now have a pretty solid understanding of how an action potential is generated and how this propagates from one neuron across a synapse to the next so let's zoom out a little bit and start to get a sense of the manner in which neurons are organized this is important to understand because neurons are found in groups and these groups contribute to larger structures still. So we must understand the hierarchy of this organization, which we can also call neural integration. When we pull back from a single neuron to see a small collection of neurons, we can call this a neuronal pool. This will serve to integrate information coming in so that it can be determined how to forward that information to where it needs to go. Here we can see a presynaptic fiber with many branching terminal ends leading to a number. Um, right. So this is the equilibrium. The blue is the equilibrium. Right. Well, actually, everything after the blue is the equilibrium. Um, so yeah well it's clear now neurons some of them are more closely associated with the presynaptic fiber as there are many more points of contact these neurons are in the discharge zone moving outwards we see other neurons with fewer points of contact and these sit within a facilitated zone okay so let's redefine kit kit is how many um, it's um, the Mazorit is uh, connected to. That's how kid it is. And then how zit it is, is how many uh, points of contact but is that even useful for the metaphor for it? How many points of contact? Per. Now, how many points of contact? The neurons in the discharge zone are on the receiving end of more synaptic contacts and thus many more neurotransmitter molecules. Therefore, these neurons are more likely to depolarize beyond the threshold required for an action potential to be generated. The neurons in the facilitated zone will depolarize to an extent, but are less likely to reach that threshold unless such stimuli are also received from somewhere else. While this is oversimplified, we may begin to see how something as simple as the transmission of an electrochemical signal can encode very complex information when we take into account the incredible number and organization of neurons, just the way that a bunch of zeros and ones being transmitted through the circuitry of your computer allows it to perform sophisticated tasks as well. In fact, neurons are indeed arranged in circuits that are loosely analogous to computer circuitry. 
Each neuron can both send and receive information, and chemical transmission across a synapse can yield either an excitatory or inhibitory response. Although it's not a perfect comparison, these similarities make a neuron not entirely unlike a transistor. Let's look at the types of circuits first. Here we see a diverging circuit. We see one input and many outputs as the signal is amplified with each transmission. A single neuron in the brain can activate a huge number of motor neurons in this manner. We can also see a converging circuit, just the opposite of a diverging circuit. Here we see multiple inputs and just one output. So the signal becomes concentrated. Sensory information often travels to the brain in this fashion. Next, we see a reverberating circuit. This is where neurons in a chain can feed back to previous neurons to form an oscillating circuit. These types of circuits control rhythmic activity like breathing, as well as repetitive actions like walking. Lastly, we can see a parallel after discharge circuit. This involves an input that diverges into parallel arrays that then converge on a single output. There is some variance in the time required for each individual signal to reach the output, so a burst of multiple impulses will be produced. These are involved in more complex brain activity, like coincidence detection. With the types of circuits covered, let's quickly examine two types of neural processing. Serial processing is an all-or-nothing type of processing. A signal travels from one neuron to the next, eventually making it to its destination and triggering the desired response. Reflexes are examples of this type of processing. Parallel processing and triggering the desired response. Reflexes are examples of this type of processing. Parallel processing, on the other hand, occurs when an input diverges into many pathways and the destination of each pathway will receive and interpret the information in its own way. This is how smelling something or hearing a particular song can trigger a variety of thoughts, memories, and emotions. In this way, parallel processing is behind most higher level brain activity in humans as we are capable of synthesizing all kinds of information to recognize obscure objects, think abstractly, make plans, and do all the other incredible things that humans can do. Let's now move forward and take a look at how the brain handles all of this information. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can... It's excellent, and it's... Now, there's no point in getting depressed all the time, but it's also a little bit depressing that that information is there. And yeah, you try to have a conversation with someone, and they're like, oh, but it's not like emotions are in the brain. Okay, so, so a lot of great stuff that we have to include in a map it. I think all of this stuff should be applicable. Um, I, I see no reason why I won't be able to use all of this terminology to describe um, the it's in the mind. So that's very exciting. Uh, it confirms, I think. You know what? Confirmation bias. What can we look at? Where doesn't it? Where does it conflict with stuff that we've been saying about map it's or about the case score? In fact, we did see something. Um, how it? Uh, uh, what did we see? So. Okay. So how kid it is. 
could maybe reflect how yeah how divergent it is on the equilibrary side and how convergent is the um antilivery side yeah this is exciting now i was calling he talked about a neuronal pool i was calling that a node um for domino from and that and that's part of dominodal processing uh then we have serial processing where there's not a whole lot involved and you know what that would be another interesting way to describe in it uh, because there are certain mechanisms in us that they don't want to hear anything else and these are very the primal reflexive reflect re, re, reflex things. Um, so, for instance, uh, if your child is threatened, um, there's not going to be a whole lot taken into account. Um, it's going to be a pretty serial soup it, uh, where it's like. Okay, my child is threatened, therefore this, and therefore, th and, and my child is threatened, and so I need to protect them. If I need to protect them, then I need to get in the way. If I need to get in the way, then I need to get over here and yell or whatever. Um, there's not a whole lot. It's not going to be very parallel. It's not a whole lot. And of course, we evolved that way. Uh, you know, we don't, you don't want a whole bunch of processing happening uh, or opportunities for that processing to go differently. Uh, when it's something as, as fundamental, as basic, or as important as that. Okay. Um, so, very good. So, the next step. Uh, I'm satisfied with that, honestly. I know it's just a six-minute video, but I'm satisfied with that. And the next step... Uh, Yeah, the next set, let's do some math bits like we had planned to do in the past.